Hello and welcome to this special program that's been put together on behalf of the Embassy of God in Kiev, Ukraine. It's actually the largest church in Europe and it's mind-boggling because we got over 100,000 members spread across the nation, touching the lives of 7 million people on a daily basis. It's phenomenal. And a lot of people keep wondering, how is that possible? You know what? To get a glimpse of how that's been possible, I have been here in Kiev, Ukraine for the past uh, four or five days and I took part in a, in a retreat that totally transformed my Christian life, my own personal life as well. It's unbelievable. And you know what? To talk about this particular uh, retreat, I have two other participants at this retreat. They are here with me to share with us what impact it had on their lives, what surprised them and what God is going to use them to do after the retreat. I want to thank you so much for watching. I want to encourage you to tell your friends and your relatives that it is happening right now on this channel. It's a program you must not miss. And also encourage your pastor, if he's not watching, to tune in right now. God bless you as you continue to watch. And you know what? I got with me here two wonderful people. And uh, one of them is called Pastor Lade Moses Alabi. And, and he's actually a pastor of a ministry known as the Narrow Way Bible Church which is actually in London. And also with him is uh, Mrs. Juliet Monene. She's actually the lady, she and her husband, who is a pastor himself, they are responsible for the distribution of the books written by Pastor Sunday of the Embassy of God in England. So you can get them, get hold of them in England for any of his materials, books, CDs, and, and uh, DVDs. You know what? God bless you as you continue to watch. Welcome to the program, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Pastor Yama. God bless you. It's good to be with you both, and I really thank God for your lives. But you know what? I start with you first, uh, Sister Juliet. Um, I just need to have an, an idea of your background, you know, you know, because you told me before you used to live in Russia, and then to know how you came in contact with the Embassy of God itself. Yes, I, I studied. I did my university education in, in Russia. I came into the country in 1988, and uh, when we came, we met, you know, we thought, when we were coming, we thought, uh, you know, maybe Russia was uh, like America, like uh, Great Britain, or the Western uh, countries, but we met the, the opposite. But being that we were on scholarship, we just had to bear with it. And uh, it was a place where you could not express your faith or practice your faith. And uh, people had to go on the ground to, to worship their God. But if you are caught, then you'll be in big trouble. Even in our school, we were taught that there was no God, and you must give the exams. So then Pastor Sunday has f finished his, uh, his school then. He was just in But then hang on a minute. Yeah. You, know, you, you said, you know, if you were caught worshiping God, yeah. or praying or reading the Bible, yes. you'd be in deep trouble. You'd be in deep trouble. This on a private level. On a private, yeah, yeah. You, because when you come, there are people who are monitoring your steps, what you're doing. Because when in the hostels, then they put you with, another, with a Russian in the room, and that Russian will be giving feedback of everything you're doing. So that was what was going on. So they see you with Bible or trying to uh, express your faith, you'll be in trouble. Wow. Yeah. Then you said you, you met Pastor Sunday? Yeah, Pastor Sunday was one of the uh, leaders then because we had student union, a Christian student union on the ground. So he was one of the leaders that were, you know, telling us to keep up our faith, not to give up. So until the time that God opened the doors for some men of God to be coming in, into... Uh, um, Russia then. So Pastor Sunday was the one interpreting and all those things. But you could already see that fire in him. That was really extraordinary. I noticed that myself. So that's why I'm not really uh, surprised to see what God has done and is doing through him. Yeah. But then, uh, apart from the fact that they clamped down on uh, religion, mm -hmm. how was life under the Soviet Union? Because I met uh, a lady from the Ukraine, because Ukraine was part of the Soviet Union then. And she said something. She said there was no toothpaste in those days that there was a container with uh, some powder in it. You dip your brush in it, your toothbrush in it, and then you brush with it. 
That was very true. That was, that was why a lot of us who came from other countries, uh, they couldn't cope. They were forced to leave. You know, a lot of people left because they couldn't cope. You mean even coming from Africa? Africa. You couldn't cope? They couldn't cope. They couldn't cope. They went back, you know, coupled up with the weather as well. The weather was, uh, you know, it's coming from a hot country and coming here. So everything was just... <laughs> and, you said food, and you said food was rationed as well. Yeah, food, drinks, everything was rationed, butter, name it, everything. You, you, you're given a ticket to get your food once a week. So that means that no human being in Russia, in, Soviet, in the Soviet Union, could buy more than necessary. You could not buy those essential commodities, you know, more than what you've been rationed to have here. Yeah. And then, you know, when, when the whole, the, the iron world came down and Pastor Sunday's ministry took off, so how did you get connected with him to actually be part of what is happening now? Yes, uh, when, after my education, uh, when uh, my husband and I went to England, but we were always communicating with them, and when Pastor is in London, Pastor Sunday is in London, we always make sure, he always, always make sure that we, we know where he is. So we're, we're always in touch and in contact until we started coming and really seeing what the great thing that God was doing. Wonderful. And he's still doing and he's still to do. Yeah. God bless you, madam. Thank you, sir. Pastor Lade Moses Alabi, God bless you, sir. Now, you know, let's, I, I need to know how you yourself came in contact with Pastor Moses, uh, Pastor, uh, Pastor Sunday, because I know... You've been in, you've been constantly around him for a while, you know, and you've been coming and going to Ukraine. Yeah. So what was it that attracted you to him? Oh, well, I grew up together with him. Did uh, you? Yes, we we were two childhood friends, and then in 1990 when I came to England, he was one of the first person I wrote. I was even trying to persuade him to um, come to England, and if if that place is too tough for him. Because I had a lot of things were going wrong, you know, you can't read your Bible, arrest, you know. So I said, well, you know, you have England for you, you can come to England. Well, he said, if the Lord wants him to come to England, he will come to England. And by accident, I brought the letter from London this time around. I came to the street just to show him. This is, you remember this letter you wrote to me when you were in 1991? That was the year I still had the letter. But we didn't know what God was going to do through him. But thank God that he didn't come because like some economic migrant, they will have said, oh, my friend is inviting me. It's an opportunity to move to a better country, you know. But he didn't come. Thank God he didn't show up. And in 2000, in the year 2000, he came to England because, I mean, he was here. We didn't know what was happening in the church. He didn't tell anyone that he has a big church. So he left a video when he came to London after been here for a lot, a lot of years. So he gave me a DVD to watch. And I saw people, I saw thousands of people coming to church. Who is your pastor? Pastor Sunday. What happened? I didn't know that this friend of mine who we ate together was a phenomenon. I was shocked and I said, how come you had this massive of people coming to serve God together with you as a pastor? You didn't advertise yourself. You didn't show it on TBN, you know, when I remember if I said, if I were you, I have 500 people in my, in my church, I would go wake up my grandfather in the grave and say, look, I'm now a big star, you know, and that's what we, you know, that's, we try to show off the, our ministry, but he didn't do that. I said, this guy must be completely dead. It, it, it was, God has had all of him, you know, so it's a, a, a complete man of God. He didn't start saying, oh, look at me, I'm now, I've arrived, nothing like that. He came to my house, ate, even while he was eating, he was eating like a military man. We had a food we called jollof rice, and we were eating together, and the, before we know it, the rice had disappeared, because he was used to eating fast and doing things in a fast way. Time management, everything was in place. Wow. I knew that there's something that this guy had that I need to have. I need to have. And in 2004, I made my first visit to Kiev. And when I came to Kiev, I was shocked because in London, where I, I stay at the moment, it's like I don't miss my country. I don't miss my second country because London is like, it's full of 
I mean, it's like West Africa. You know what I'm saying? So when I came it's to full of black people. Black people. Yeah. When I came to Kiev, I was shocked to be a minority. Everybody was looking at me as if I just jumped from the sky. We, um, there's not a lot of minority people here. So for him to succeed in Kiev, it must have been something. It must have been God. It must have been God. It must have been God. It was surprising. And for me to look at the church to see how ministries are in place, the ushers were like professional people. I knew that I need, there's something that he has taught these people. Their smiles were genuine. They were like angels. They were like angels without wings. So I knew that we had to, the church in the West had to learn something from him. And since 2004, I've been coming to Kiev. Wow. This is my seventh year now. God bless you. You know, it's, it's, this is surprising because I never knew you were childhood friends with him. You just, this is shocking. You know, like on a program, all of a sudden you threw this bombshell. So, you know, growing up with him and now looking back, what attributes did you think he possessed at that time that you believe God has used to actually, you know, do this great work? Well, Pastor Sunday in those days was very competitive. He couldn't be beaten in a race, running, football. I mean, we, we, when we were growing up, he won't, if you're having like weightlifting contest and you pick up the weight more than him, he will come behind his scenes and pick up a heavier weight. You can't be beaten. Everything he had, even some of his friends, um, and shall I say, if Pastor Buster would not mind, his girlfriends were be the most beautiful. He, 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 had he had touch for class, distinction. It was, you know, and it was dutiful. His, his studies, he never played with his studies because, I mean, it was his last opportunity to. So he was, he was, he was competitive. He was wanted to be the best. Like a man of God said to me, said, if he found a man praying for four hours and it's in Mongolia, he would want to beat that record to pray for six hours. And if you hear that another one prays for six hours in another part of the world, you want to pray seven hours. So Pastor Sunday is like that. He wants to be the best in everything, in every sphere of life. He wants to be the best. And that's the kind of challenge because we are not told to be somebody. That's why we see in the secular world, many boxers or whatever, they want to be the champion. That's why they want to be the best. Because if you be the best, then you can retire and be undefeated. That's the record that Christians are not pursuing, to be the best in their field. Wonderful. And you know what you said that surprised me was the fact that being even a close friend with you, yeah. normally, you know, as a friend, mm -hmm. if I'm in another country, I grow a ministry to a thousand or two thousand. I'll be so excited. I'll send you the DVD and say, look, check this out. I have arrived. But he didn't do that. He didn't do They didn't let anybody know. And God began to speak to you. You see what I'm saying? It's a dead man. A dead man that's not looking for the applause of men. He's not looking for the praise of men. He's not looking to be like worshipped. That's amazing. It's not looking for men to say, oh, come to America and then we'll put you on a big television. No, it was, his flesh was dead because he had the duty. That's what I noticed about mm -hmm. him when I, when I interviewed him. Mm -hmm. And I asked him, I said, you know, you know, what if you should lose all these things today and everything? He said, in fact, he said he preferred that God should take him to, he said, because he's, he believes he's done enough. Mm -hmm. In fact, that God should take him to heaven. He said, just because mm -hmm. the pressure has been intense, but he believes he's done mm -hmm. enough. But I, I'm just praying that God would extend his, you know, lengthen his life, should live even till 100 years Amen. to do a lot more work because the man still has a lot in him that's not out yet. And that's why I'm so excited about what's going on here. Oh, it's a blessing to the kingdom of God. You know, in the West, if you notice, Pastor Yemi, a lot of people go to church um, to have happiness on Sunday. And on Monday, the depression goes down because there is no go for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, to Saturday. There's no go. So they wait for the next Sunday to have another like drug to keep them going. So church has now become an, a, a hospital where they give them coffee or cappuccino to, to top up their uh, happiness level. But when we see church, church is the place where you get trained, you get empowered to go and deliver. But we are not told that. We, we, we try to do evangelism by, so that to please our conscience. But if we really want fulfillment in our calling, we need to know what God, why God has sent us to England. And I'm talking to many pastors here because many pastors think when, when they set up a church and they are 200, yes, successful. But the members are kept in prison. But if we can teach our members their calling, why, why, first of all, why have they come to England? Or if you are from 
Pakistan, where, where are we an uncommunicated migrant or am I you a missionary? Because I, I asked the Lord when, when I came to England, what, have you, what, have I, what am I doing here? Because the weather, you, you have a love, you, we had weather, but yours, yours was. But in England then, the weather was not too good for me. I said, what am I doing here? So God said to me, laddie, called my name and said, you're not coming here to make money. And in 2004, when I met Pastor Sunday, he began to tell me, first of all, change your name. So he told me to change my name. So I changed my name to Moses. He said, because he has sent me to be a deliverer, a deliverer for the nation, a deliverer for England especially. So and because he told me I'm not coming to make money, to, to make disciples. So my calling right now, it's, it's, a, it's like information. It's like informing the people, like advertising him. Because he said, you are my signboard. So when I met Pastor Sunday, he was the one that really made me to know what is a signboard for hmm. the Lord. Wonderful. God bless you, sir. Thank, Thank you so much, Pastor Lade. Thank you. Uh, coming back to you, Sister Juliet. Um, some pastors, because I know some of them in England, you see, when they see a good work like this, rather than humbling themselves and say, listen, I haven't delivered. I need to go check this guy out and learn what he's doing to be effective and successful like him. They say, oh, don't mind that guy. It's easier to build a 100,000 mega church in, you know, in Ukraine, in former Russia, because the Russians have been regimented in a way to move like military. So it's possible because already they've been brainwashed before and this and that. You know, you now living in Russia and even living in England, what do you think of that statement? Is, you know, is it easy to build a church like that here you know, based on the kind of people that live in this part of the world? I would say to those pastors who would think that is easier here. First of all, they are proud. That is pride. And God doesn't like proud oh, people. Excuse me. Yeah. If you really want to, you know, do, if you, God has called you to do something and you know you are not succeeding in it, I see somebody who, go, who is doing the same thing as succeeding, you will try and make sure maybe you're doing something wrong. And that's what I would say to most pastors that they are doing something wrong. That's why there's no result. Coming to here, well, the question you asked me about uh, whether it's easier here, I would say it's 10 times <laughs> more difficult here than in England or any other European countries because there the laws of the land is, the, is, is biblical. Those that their, grand, their great-grandparents were, were Christians. We, we've heard about Wiggles and all those uh, other men and, uh, and women of God that God used mightily. So they, they have uh, the heritage, Christian heritage, which we didn't have here. Here, the, as I said before, you can't be found in the Bible. They, 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 there's a subject in school telling you there is no God. And it was a compulsory subject that you have to do. Without that, you can't, you can't pass any other subject. Serious? Yes. My. So you, you, what you're saying is that in reality, it's a lot easier. It's easier in the, the UK, West, in the West. In the West than in the former Soviet Union. Because I was thinking about it, that look, yeah. people in this country for years have been programmed to believe there's no God. Like you said, yes. a subject that says, listen, there's no, there's God, no God, you get on with it. Yes. And then, you know, for you to be successful here, that means you have to start changing that mentality, mentality yes. into believing that there's God, first of all, first of all. before you now make them into disciples. Yes, but at yes. our end, there's nothing like that yes. because people already believe there's God. So it should be a lot easier. A lot easier. It should be a lot easier in the Western world than in this place. Like you said, I believe it's pride. Yeah, it is. God bless you, madam. Let, let's now go to the retreat. How did you hear about the retreat? I always come at, um, you know, every anniversary. It's like a, once a year. That's, uh, I always come over here. But uh, this time I was lucky to, to have assisted in the, in the retreat. So I already, I just uh, made up my mind that coming after the an anniversary, I'll just go for the retreat as well. Yeah. So now, now going through the retreat, how do you find it personally? Looking, at, looking back at what happened. I have been revolutionized. This is the, the, the heartbeat of God. This, this, is this is the place you can, get, you can get to know the principles 
of what the kingdom of God is. And that's why we are seeing the result. Because without anything you do in life, you, there's, you have a principle to whatever you do. The kingdom of God is the same way as well. So if for you to have a result or you're doing something there's no result, know something is wrong. And I would advise anyone who is listening to me, remove every pride in you. Humble yourself and learn from those that have, been, that have success. As I say, iron sharpened iron. If you, you, you not, don't argue or anything, just say, Please, what should I do? This is, is Ukraine is the place that God has set for every Christian. I, I, I know, uh, you know, take that as a note. Every Christian should come and learn the way that God has predestined church to be. Wonderful. Yeah. So when you when the when the retreat started, what was really shocking to you? Okay. What was shook you out of your your normal situation i experienced everything discipline in the body of christ uh, we, we we have to be disciplined to be able to achieve what god has called you to do you put discipline into place hi i hope you've been blessed by what you just watched and i want to thank you and, and for so much for watching and i would like to take this opportunity to encourage you to get connected with this great ministry you need the template of what's been used here to actually achieve greatness in your own generation. So go on to the God Embassy website, check it out, and make sure you identify the next date for the next retreat so that you don't miss out. It's the beginning of greatness for you. God bless you as you continue to do the things of the kingdom. Bye for now.